love beauties happy tuesday if it's the same day that you're watching it the rates uploaded happy tuesday to you all additionally hello my name is gurish kaur if you're new here hello so today i'm here to bust some very common skincare myths for all of you my beauties out there and educate you all a little more with regards to some very common skincare myths that i keep hearing and reading every now and then so you can certainly expect some skincare knowledge out of this video and additionally if you're wondering how i created this makeup look and if you like what you see please wait for this tutorial to drop in i believe it will drop in after this video so yeah just check my channel and subscribe to my channel turn on the notification bell you will be notified when the tutorial goes up however to know some skincare myths and to bust them and debunk them please keep on watching so myth number 1 fragrance in skincare is no evil like let's start with the more controversial myths and facts so yeah i have been accused by people of demonizing fragrance in my skincare review videos and my product review videos i have a good long explanation to this well <laughs> so i just want to take a moment to explain that i personally i'm not a fan of fragrance in my skincare but like fragrance is not the ultimate evil in your skincare as well so basically why i don't like fragrance in skincare is just because it's unnecessary because fragrance or perfume in your skincare has no skincare benefits it will not treat your skin in any way it's just there for the experience side of things and additionally some people are sensitive to fragrance in their skincare with me personally i'm okay with like a mild subtle fragrance you know subtle underlying fragrance in my skincare but if it's a very overpowering very heavily scented then my skin does tend to break out and that has happened always with me in the past and yeah so when a product is heavily scented or like a little too perfumey then my skin definitely does break out so as a product reviewer it's my duty to you know just put it out there that this has fragrance and mention it as a con because it can react with some people's skin but yet it's not the ultimate evil so if you belong to a sensitive skin category or are in particular sensitive to fragrance you can choose to go fragrance free with your skincare rituals and yeah that is all the gist about <laughs> fragrance in skincare is not the ultimate evil a majority of people are like okay with fragrance in their skincare because it does not break them out so it if it works for you if that's your way to go with your skincare then go ahead with it. and the myth number 2 is that all natural means 100% safe and the best for your skin and chemical means bad and you know not good for your skin it will just ruin your skin no well definitely not cuz safe ingredients at a stable ph level is what our skin needs natural ingredients are just not stable in their natural nature thereby natural things can be good or bad having said that everything around you is pretty much a chemical dude the water you drink is a chemical h2o it's hydrogen and oxygen that's a chemical compound again so nothing really is natural as such and even these naturally occurring ingredients need to be synthesized in labs to be at a stable you know ph level and everything to suit your skin type for example the lemons in your kitchen also contain vitamin c but that kind of vitamin c is not appropriate to be used uh, top to be used topically on your skin so yeah that's where the difference lies whereas a synthesized version of ascorbic acid that is vitamin c is more suitable and thereby synthetic ingredients in your beauty products is not bad i mean if you are the diy style if you prefer the diy style of skincare good for you but at times the chemically processed creams are less likely to break you out as compared to a kitchen diy so that's all i just want to say and another very common myth the third myth for the day is that dry skin ages faster than oily skin which is not really true it's just that both the skin types age differently let me explain how so the phenomenon of aging that is usually defined by the formation of fine lines and wrinkles that has more to do with the elastin loss in the body the collagen loss in the skin rather than the oil production in your skin and chronologically as we grow older the collagen and the elastin has to lose ultimately as our bodies you know 
get older so that is just something very inevitable apart from that it could also be due to environmental stressors your diet your lifestyle there could be a lot of factors leading to that loss of elastin and collagen in the first place so the oil production does not really have to do anything with that also your genetics have a huge part to play in the formation of wrinkles and fine lines on your face it's a lot of genes playing their part in there additionally the whole concept of that dry skin ages faster comes in from dry skin is dry and you know stretchy so it also appears crinkly fast if you get me if something is very dry and stretchy it will appear appear crinkly faster than something that is more moist and you know more emollient and uh, oily basically so that is where the comparison comes in so thereby because of this generic difference dry skin appears or might appear to have you know uh, more wrinkles but oily skin might really have even deeper wrinkles but because the skin is thicker and more hydrated and more you know oily they might not appear as crinkly that way the moral of the story is that oily skin does not age better or later than dry skin it just ages differently and the fourth myth of the day is that you will outgrow your acne as you go out of your teenage years and it's just teenage acne and I'm very like it's very unfortunate for me to put it out there but no cause of acne does not really have to do with the numeric age so basically acne could be caused due to a numerous reasons even after your teenage years it definitely like during the teenage years the puberty hormones are definitely playing with your skin and thereby you flare up with acne but even like it's not a certain age that as you turn 18 or 19 will stop getting acne at all that's not how it works so the puberty acne is definitely something very hormonal and that everybody pretty much goes through but even after your teenage years you're definitely likely to get acne because of a hundred various reasons again your diet your lifestyle the environmental stressors the lifestyle stress and everything leads to flare-up and specifically in women there are a lot more complications when it comes to hormones while growing up so you can have acne issues due to your PCOS problem or a thyroid complication and all that stuff so yeah definitely when you hear that your acne is just gonna be there for at the mark of 18 19 years your teenage years it's not really the truth you can flare up at any point in life so hmm stress can trigger your acne if you are intolerant to something in your diet that can trigger your acne the environmental stressors the pollution dirt can trigger your acne even um, trying out new products can trigger your acne if some product does not suit your skin it can lead to a flare-up so all you can do is on your end keep your hormones in check visit a doctor a dermat who is a specialist in their field and keep your diet in check be as little stressful as possible lead a happy life and also be cautious of the products you're using of the potential irritants that can flare up your skin so yeah so the last myth to address today is that you need a lot of products to have good skin not really well because of this whole capitalist society that we live in today we might feel the need that we require a, you know a lot of products like at least a 10 12 step routine to really have that flawless skin but not really like not really honey you can have a basic ctm routine followed by a sunscreen and have beautiful skin that's all i do pretty much <laughs> not saying that i have beautiful beautiful skin my skin is just acting up lately but regardlessly the point is that you can have definitely beautiful skin just if you follow the basic cleansing toning moisturizing um end up with a sunscreen you know topped up with the sunscreen routine that's good to go also like a subhead myth to the same that you should use you know one range from a com you know one complete range from one brand and not mix a lot of brands in your skincare not really if you're only being conscious of the ingredients you're putting together you must not put two to three very active ingredients in your uh, routine altogether but apart from that you can definitely mix and match the brands and 
know the specific products you like from a particular brand and curate your own personalized skincare routine just be cautious of the irritants and if there are any active ingredients so what active ingredients you can pair it just be a little cautious of that and yeah you're good to go skincare we, we just over complicate skincare at times however definitely if you're dealing with a certain skin condition or a skin issue that you want to deal certainly if it's pigmentation or it's acne prone skin you can definitely use another product or cream uh, or serum to treat that in particular but for that you definitely must consult a dermat and not really an online blogger youtuber like me please take your skincare seriously and do not blindly follow anybody's skincare routine as it is because skincare is very personal and what works for me might or might not work for you thereby all you people who always keep on asking me to give my skincare routine i share the products because they're not very supremely active or something but i definitely do not take all the responsibility if it might suit your skin or not I've been speaking for quite a while now but that's all I wanted to say. That's all I got for you for the first part of the skincare myths buster debunking session. If you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments below if it helped you in any certain way. I'll bring a part 2, 3, 4 to this because I have a lot of more skincare myths to talk about. Let me know if you enjoyed that and thank you so much for tuning in. It was lovely to have you all here. See you next time.